Hi everyone! I have a free tutorial for you today and you are absolutely going to love it. We are going to be making this really cool frame. Well, not the frame. We're going to make the insert for inside the frame. It's just a quick little shadow box frame. Uh, I don't remember if I bought it at uh, Michael's or Target or Kohl's, one of those places. Um, and then, but we're going to create this beautiful insert out of our poinsettia petal suite. And let me get started and show you what I used and what you need to make sure that you gather up before we get started. Okay, so you're going to need to have the poinsettia petals. I'm actually going to need the whole suite. And in the holiday catalog, you can actually do a quick order of the whole suite itself. And then you get everything that you need to do this. Well, not everything, you need some extra cardstock. But for the most part, this is the suite that I use to create this. And in the suite, you get the Poinsettia Petal stamp set, the Poinsettia dies. And this is the stamp set and dies. Lots and lots of pieces, so lots of creativity can happen here. The Poinsettia dies. This beautiful poinsettia DSP, this amazing plush poinsettia specialty paper, it's like flocking on top, so it's like super cool. The beaded pearls and the real red sheer ribbon. You're also going to need some real red cardstock, some old olive cardstock, some thick white cardstock, uh, regular whisper white, or you can use the thick white for everything if you that's all you have. You're going to need the stitched so sweetly dies, tasteful label dies, your subtles folder, your evergreen forest folder. These are 3D embossing folders. So you're going to need these are the extra pieces outside of the suite, or you could of course substitute with something that you already have. That's totally doable. And you'll also need some brass foil. Uh, brass foil sheets. So those are the things that are outside of the suite. So let me get started and I'm going to show you how I made this. Let's get started by making the elements that we need. All right, so first off we are going to use this thick white and real red and old olive. And we're going to get the dies out. Okay, and from the dies, we're going to use, I'm going to start with the real red. We need a, all three layers of the poinsettia. And this particular framelit set also comes with a piece that gives us some embossing in it. So it's just a, uh, just an insert that kind of goes over. Uh, or goes into it so you get some added texture to the uh, petals so you don't have to actually stamp. Now of course the stamp set has the stamping so you could do that but let me just line these up or maybe line these up. I think it goes right here. So that goes there. This one goes um, it's gotta go there. That one goes there and this one goes like this. Okay. So we need one of each of those. Let me get my stamp and emboss out because we're going to be needing that quite a bit, actually. All right, so let's get that over here. Oops, of course, I just threw those everywhere. All right, let's get those back lined up. And there, and you know, this doesn't have to be, you know, super perfect. I mean, if they moved around a little bit, you're never really truly going to go notice exactly that those might be offset just a little bit. But we are going to try to be in the center. Okay, get that down there. Crank that through on that one. All right. That gives me one of each of those petals got the large petal, the medium petal, and the small petal. Okay. Now out of the thick white, we are going to get 
just the medium and the small petal. We don't need the large one. The, the white one is just done with two layers instead of three. And I think this goes, nope, right. You know, this is the hardest part is lining these up, right? You'd think I would have this mastered by now. And I don't know why, there we go, it goes like that. And then this one here, I believe goes right there. Nope, it does not. Kind of have to just uh, play with it for a moment. There we go. Sometimes I get these like the minute I set them down and then other times I have to play with them. That still isn't right. I had these marked at one point, but uh, the, the marking I had, uh, there we go, goes like that. All right, so this, the, the thick white, and the reason I'm using thick white instead of regular whisper white is because this is a three-dimensional project. I wanted it to be a little bit stiffer, and sometimes humidity in certain areas can soften your paper, and it'll make your poinsettia not look quite so fluffy. All right, let's get that one go all the way through. Okay, and then, Other. one medium one and one small one All right then you're also going to need that little piece of old olive and this is just scrap and you're going to need three of the leaves and I did use um, two large ones and one small one okay so we'll have to run this through more than once but there's one and one, and there's the inside for the large run, the inside for the small one. Let's run that through. Okay, and then I'm going to need one more large one. That's the small one and a second large one. All right. All right, so that's what we need out of the cardstock. Now out of your foil, oops, didn't need that. Out of the foil, we're going to need three of the little holly branches. And these are just out of foil. Okay. Let's get that on there. I'm going to get a different plate so that my foil doesn't get all messy. I always save one really new plate that doesn't have any cutting on it. I mean, you're going to see this edge, but that's from the back side of the dies. But this, this kind of helps the foil from not getting impressions in it. And this one I'm just going to reel back because it's really short. And that's one. Get a piercing tool. And two. And we're going to need one more. So that is going to be three. All right, that's the third one. Okay, and then from the stitched so sweetly dies, we're going to need this uh, second from largest rectangle at that other and that we also need out of foil okay and again so i don't uh, get my foil all funny so what happens is the foil gets the imprint of whatever is already cut on your cut on your plate so i try to use a a, a cleaner one okay so we need that 
Then we're also going to need to uh, have a piece of Whisper White that is three and a quarter by two and one eighth. And that we are going to emboss with the Forest Evergreen Forest embossing folder. And we're just going to get these trees. So we just want to kind of get, um, get the tree pattern you know, kind of close to the top of the paper here. I know it's hard to see in the in the light with glares, but it's just kind of just along the center there. And we're going to emboss that. And with that, we don't need those two plates. <clears throat> this one is one of the new Stampin' Up! folders. So with the Stampin' and Stamp and emboss, uh, stamp and cut machine, or boss and cut machine, we have an impression plate. So we're just using the base plate and the folder with the paper and the impression, impression plate on top, the gray one on top. And that gives us this really pretty kind of evergreen texture on this paper here. So we need that. Okay. And then since I have a machine on my table, we're going to do this part too. You're, you need a piece of uh, real red that is cut at 6 inches by 6 inches. And that also is going to go into the Subtles folder. And it fits perfectly. Okay. Now this is one of their older versions. So sometimes when you have the older project you have to use a, a different plate and this one just uses a clear plate on top just because mine is an older version so it's a little bit thicker than the new style so if you happen to have one from a catalog or two ago you're going to need to just use one one clear plate on top and that gives us just this little subtle texturing on there all right let me get this out of the way don't need those things anymore Okay, now let's get this made. So this, I'm going to kind of start with this. Um, we're going to start kind of just putting our assemble our pieces together. Okay, and I forgot something over here. Um, that's okay, I can get that cut real quick. All right, so on your petals, let's get those put together. Oh, I forgot to cut one thing and I lost it. I totally lost it. It fell off my table or got stuck to something. So I do need my machine back. And I guess I'm going to have to get the, um, wow, I guess I'm going to have to get some paper back out. I thought my room was clean, but I guess it's not as clean as I thought it was. Let's get that machine back out. And we need the regular platform the number two platform and a clear plate because we are going to use one more die in the specialty paper. Let me show you what we have here. So we have uh, some different patterns of paper here, but one of the patterns has all of these uh, poinsettias on it. And you can actually cut them out with one of the dies. So one of the things that we're going to do is cut out, so I have a little one cut out here, and we're just going to match this up where it needs to go. So see how it can be matched right up and that frosted or the puffy stuff is on top, it sits right in there. So we're gonna lay that on there too. And get that cut. One more piece that we had to prep and get cut, and of course, I don't know, flew off my table, I guess. All right, so now that is all we need for this big shot, or the uh, Stampin' Emboss now. I'm going to keep calling it a big shot, even though that's not what it is. And of course, if you have a big shot, you can keep using that too. All of our dies still work in that machine. So let's get some of our other parts and pieces assembled, okay? All right, so we need to um, assemble these flowers. And I did, so I have three petals for the red and two petals for the white. On the white, I sponged 
some soft sea foam on the edges. So you know how we can buy those pretty poinsettias in white? They always have that little hint of kind of green in them. Well, this kind of creates that same look where you get that little bit of green tint to the edge. And the soft sea foam is just a nice subtle soft green. Don't you love some of the names that Stampin' Up! has for our ink colors? Card color, cardstock. It's great that it all color coordinates. All right. Now on the red one, we're going to sponge real red. And I'm going to do the same thing on all three layers. Is get a little bit darker here. This kind of gives you a little bit more depth and dimension to your project. Uh, whether you're using this on a card or on um, a, a three-dimensional art project like we're doing today, it, it kind of just adds a little more depth and dimension. Gives it a little bit more, whoops, that's upside down. Gives it a little bit more artistic look to it. A little more reality too. I mean, what petal has just one real true solid color? Now, one thing you may have noticed in our catalog is we also have uh, some red velvet paper. You could also use that, and that would make a really, really nice texture in this, too, if you used red velvet instead of the, rel the red cardstock. And then on our leaves, I'm going to sponge the edges of those in Old Olive. This, you know... Like I said, we, doesn't that look better? I mean, look at the two different things here, okay? So we have we have a petal that just looks like a plain green piece of paper. This one's got a little more character to it. So we're gonna, we're gonna give our, our project a little more character. I'm gonna do a little bit on the top too, just to kind of blend that in. Give those a little bit more depth and dimension. All right, so on all of these, I just kind of creased the center of the, I'm almost folding the, the petal in half. And that gives it a little bit more, again, realistic look to it. And I did that to all of them, all the layers, all five petals on each layer. All right, so we're going to kind of go around there. I'm going to end up with red on my white. I just know it because I have red all over my fingers. Apparently, I've been doing some projects today. And we're going to get that one. So this one only has two layers. And I'm going to do the same thing to my leaves, too. I'm going to go ahead and fold those right in half also. Now these are dimensional on, dim each layer has dimensionals. So I'm gonna put a dimensional in between each layer. I have lots of room, unlike a card, I have lots of room in my shadow box to really layer things up. You know, obviously if you're gonna put this on a card, you probably don't wanna put dimensionals in between, especially if you're gonna mail it. Of course, if you're gonna hand it to somebody, you can certainly put all the layers that you could possibly put in there. All right, let's do this one. And let's get that one layered up. Right, like that. All right. So on the back of this one, I'm going to add, um, I'm going to add my little, my little guys right to the back because that'll be easier to do first. Okay, so let's, I'm going to add this to the back of this one. I think I'll put it out right. Oh, I got this little piece right here in the middle. That's kind of funny. We don't need that piece. Get out of there. And uh, where was I at? I think I was right here. All right. Well, maybe I'll put it over here. No, oh, I liked it there better. Okay, so we're just going to give that, put that in the middle there. And then on the red one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just add a little bit of tape to the back of this. And I'm going to add, I'm going to add one right about there. And we're going to get one right about there. Yeah, that's probably good. 
and I'm just tacking that on. We're going to end up putting a dimensional over this whole thing eventually right there, so that'll help hold it on too. And the same thing on this one. There's going to be a dimensional ultimately on there anyway, so you could also hang on to it from there too. All right. So these I'm not going to do anything with yet because we're going to be able to tuck those in. So these are just some of the elements we have made. Okay, this uh, part that the piece that you embossed, which again was three and a quarter by two and one eighth originally, we're going to uh, layer that right over the top, just inside this beautiful stitching. Oh my goodness, I got red on there. Well, I guess we'll switch that out after I finish the class. Okay, so I must have, uh, look at, I got like, major red. I have to get a white, otherwise we're going to have red everywhere. Sorry guys, didn't mean to do that. But apparently I stuck my fingers into the red ink a little bit more than I should have. Okay, so on, uh, let's get our parts and pieces. So the next two things we have to kind of pre-assemble is uh, the wood grain and your strip of six inch by one and seven eighths real red. And the, this was six inch by one and three quarters. So we only have like, you know, eighth inch margins here. And these are the same length. So you're only gonna see border on the top and the bottom on this one. And then the other two layers, the, the uh, designer paper, which was four and three eighths by four and three eighths is on the old olive that is four and a half by four and a half. And again, I have pretty narrow matting here. I wanted it to be a little bit more elegant. I think the narrow matting is a little more elegant than, than the other matting. Okay, so on here, start building this. We're going to use dimensionals for this layer. We can put more. I don't want to take all day with you guys here watching me, so I'm just going to put five, but you can certainly put as many as you want to hold this up so that it doesn't sag, because it is three-dimensional. And that's going to go right into the middle, okay? And then on this piece, you're going to use some of that uh, Real Red Sheer Ribbon. This, I love this ribbon. This is like one of the nicest ribbons I've seen in a while, okay? And we're just going to I'm going to wrap all the way around it. You certainly could, you know, do what most people do and put a strip across the top, the front, which you'd need about a six and a half inch strip to be able to, t to wrap it around. And then you're going to need about eight inches for a bow if you, if you want to do them in two pieces instead of one. I find it super easy just to do it one. And I know bows can be tricky for most people. And I guess the the part that's important is to keep your ribbon as flat as possible. So if your ribbon's flat this way, make sure that your ribbon stays flat when it goes over it. And you're gonna tuck that around it, okay? And then I'm going to do my uh, top and bottom, you know, so you're, you're back up perpendicular to it. And that gives it, a, it helps hold it in place and keep it a little bit tighter too. And I'm gonna let my paper bend a little bit um, I don't know if you can see it, but it's bending up because I always let it go a little bit and it and it flops back down when you loosen it. And I'm going to put my pinky here on the knot. I'm going to pick up a bow, a loop, okay? And then again, I'm keeping my ribbon, ooh, it's almost gone, keeping my ribbon flat and going around and over. Don't twist your ribbon. And I'm going to slide that back under with my finger and pull it tight. Well, I'm not going to pull it super tight because I'm going to put it mostly tight. Then I'm going to hold my finger in the middle and I'm going to adjust my tails. I'm going to bring them down a little shorter than they need to be because when I retighten, they're going to get longer again. Okay? And you can always tighten again, but if you hold the middle, it stops this ribbon from curling over itself. Okay? And we'll get that on there. There. Okay, let me get find my scissors, which I don't know where my ribbon scissors went, so I'll use these. And we're going to get these tails cut a little bit. Okay, now this, I'm going to run some tape, let me get my ribbon centered, 
I'm just going to run some tape towards the center here and then I'm going to add a dimensional on each corner, on each end rather, because this doesn't go all the way across uh, solid, but this will help support my ends. And I'm just going to put this one about there, just about a half inch or so above the bottom. Okay. And those two dimensionals under the two edges will help support that edge a little bit. I still think my bow is a little too wild there. I think that tail's a little bit too long too. Okay. Now for the poinsettias and the rest of the parts. Okay, so then this piece here is on dimensionals also. So we're gonna I go through a lot of dimensionals. I love dimension. I'm sure you've heard me tell you that before. Texture, interest, dimension, I love all of those things. So this is going to go in the middle here. And it's okay if it doesn't cover that bottom, you're not really going to see it the way we're going to finish decorating this. But we're going to get this kind of in the middle here. And it's on dimensionals. And I'm going to have my funny little red spot there. Oh, I don't even know if I'm straight. I have astigmatism, so sometimes straight is not always a reality for me. All right, so then you're going to have this piece of vellum that we cut out, this one little piece here. So I know that's hard to see, but this little guy that we cut out of the vellum paper, the flocking, pretty little flocking, we're just going to end up with along the one side of it. We're going to put a little bit of tape. I know vellum is one of those things that you're not sure whether the tape is going to show. Once you, you don't really notice it when it's clear, but once you put pressure on it, it seems to pop up. But we're just going to put it towards one edge because we're going to cover that edge anyway. And we're going to put that towards the edge here of the bottom there. Okay. And we're going to get our little red poinsettia. Take that dimensional backing off and we're going to put that off to the side towards the bow. Oh, I think I'm going to turn it a little bit like that. Okay. And then the white one, we're going to get the dimensional backing off of that also. And that one's actually going to kind of tuck underneath. I'm going to kind of tuck underneath a little bit. And we're probably going to do right about, right about there is good. I'm going to pull these up to give them a little more depth. Now, even though I only put each of these on one dimensional, um, that's fine because this one's still a little bit taller than the one because we used three layers on this one and we only used two layers on that. But I'm going to bend those up and give them a little bit more kapump. All right, now our other leaves, these are also on a dimensional. I'm just going to put a dimensional on the bottom and I'm going to use the two larger ones on this side and I'm just going to pull that up and put that. Oh, let's get it under the ribbon here a little bit. Yeah, I like that. Okay, and the same with this one. Let's put a little dimensional on that. Dimensionals make great adhesives. On that one here, we're going to put underneath. We're just going to kind of tuck it underneath. And I think I want to go a little further that way. Oh, that's not really where I wanted to be. Right there's good. Okay. And again, we're going to give that a little squish up. Squish up. Let it be nice and dimensional. And of course, what did I do? I flatten that down. Look that. All right. And then this one, same thing. I'm going to grab a dimensional for the end of this. And the reason I'm putting them on dimensionals is because they're not far enough in underneath there to be actually on this piece. They're just short of it. And otherwise they would fall to the back and they would just look a little funny. And the same with this one. I'm just going to kind of put it underneath there so it kind of bops out there. Okay. Now, of course, we have to finish this off a little bit, right? Just still looks a little plain. But we have magic. They're called beaded pearls. Look at that magic. And these I put on with a glue dot. And let's push that on there. 
And we're going to put that right in the middle on that one. Whoops. And the second one, same thing. Let me get it right. I don't think the glue dot ended up on there. Nope, it did not. Get back here, glue dots. I didn't push hard enough, I guess. And a glue dot down there. And that gives us like lots and lots of dimension. Now, there are three patterns in the uh, paper, the um, specialty paper. And I did, you could choose whatever you want. Uh, mine, I did the scrolled version. But uh, let's do this one in another pattern, just so that you can see that they can be different. And that is actually 8 inches by 8 inches. So any one, you get two sheets of each, any one that you want, you're going to use um, 8 inch by 8 inch. And this, I also added on dimensionals because I have plenty of space in that shadow box to bring up more stuff. And then, of course, I'm almost out of dimensionals on that sheet. So this, just because there's so many, uh, it's already a little bit um, warped because I embossed it just to get that texture. I'm going to add a few extra uh, dimensionals just to help support this piece of paper. Because, of course, again, if you have any kind of humidity, your paper is going to want to kind of sag or curl a little bit. Um, today I'm in Michigan and today's been just uh, a typical fall day here. Uh, it was a beautiful sunny morning. It's cold outside. Beautiful sunny morning. Then it was sleeting. Then the sun came out again. Then it started snowing. And uh, most of this video it's been sleeting again, but every now and then I keep seeing that sh sunshine come in. All right, we're just going to put that right in the center. And voila, one beautiful insert. So as you can see, I used a different pattern. This one here, this one here has that, like the scroll, it's got the scroll pattern. And this one here, I used the points, or the, uh, the leaves and the berries. And then you could also use the points out of pattern too. Like we cut out from the middle. Um, if your frame does not come with a white piece of paper in it, which I just flipped over, it was the label, I just flipped it over, you could always back this with a piece of Whisper White cardstock at 8 by 8 inches also, and then it would fit in your frame very nicely. But as you can see, you have lots of dimension. Lots of dimension. And now, wouldn't your mother, your sister, your daughter, your neighbor school teacher. I know we're not in school right now with COVID, or at least some of us aren't. But these would be great gifts to give away, um, inexpensive for you to actually uh, create. Um, and then you'd have something beautiful to give everybody because who doesn't like to decorate for Christmas? This would look great in a little bathroom, a little powder room. That would be awesome. Any of the products that you saw here today can be purchased online at my store, which is at www.stampersclub.com, as you can see there. And if you have any questions, make sure that you contact me. I'd be happy to help you out. So, I hope you had a fun time creating with me today and that you will also enjoy your Poinsettia Petals Suite. Have a great day. Bye now.